Thank you. And members, I want to take a bit uh, of uh, time on um, our female MPs for good report. <laughs> thank you, thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise also to support supplementary budget one of 2024-2025 uh, because though it came early, Mr. Speaker, because of the hostility measures that we are undertaking after we dropped the finance bill. Um, Mr. Speaker, I know there are so many cuts in this budget, but we have to live with it because that is how things are. And we have to live in our means. Mr. Speaker, I know our roads are in a very pathetic situation but from this budget, we have seen that we have reduced 14 billion for roads, meant for roads. And what I can tell the, mini, uh, the Ministry of Roads and Transport is to look at the critical, after the phrase that we had uh, two months ago, to look at critical roads that need to be repaired because we are not starting new projects because we don't have enough money for new projects. New projects means even going outside there to borrow and we don't even have means even to repay the debts that we have. But uh, out of this budget, what uh, made me happy is the JSS interns, they are going to be employed. That one is a win for them because there are many, 46,000 uh, 46, in number across the country. And I can say, at least that one looks good for them because they were, uh, they were really looking forward to be employed and after the drop of the finance bill, there was a possibility that they were not going to be absorbed by the government. But looking at these uh, estimates, I've seen they have been factored in. I know before we dropped the finance bill, there was, uh, we had talked about the sanitary towers where we had said that they were going to be manufactured rockery, but uh, going forward before, uh, before the hostility measures were taken, at least we were going to, uh, they were going to be manufacturing in Kenya, offering a lot of uh, employment for our young men and women, and at least we, we were supposed to be buying from Kenya and we were going to build our economy. But looking at things the way they are, I can say at least we have a shortfall when it comes to our sanitary towers for our children, which is a very important issue for our young girls at school, both primary and secondary school but because things are looking this way, and their budget has not been reduced from 940 uh, million Kenya shillings for buying for them the sanitary towers. Another thing that uh, was in the finance bill that was dropped, and it is not in this uh, supplementary estimates, it is because we are going to have uh, connectivity across the country where every constituency was to receive 50 million Kenya shillings to put power where they have never seen power since independent, but going with these uh, 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 estimates, that one has been reduced. Also, what has made me happy today is the feeding program for our vulnerable children in the arid areas. I'm happy for them. Without food, children cannot concentrate in school. Once they are given this money, at least they'll be going to school looking forward, they are going to be fed. And uh, me, I'm a champion for children I like when children are given uh, their privilege at whatever stage of their lives. They are the next, uh, they are the next uh, leaders of this nation as well as they, are, they, they will be the core po component of our nation. So we need to take care of them at their small ages and small years in their small years. Uh, uh, honorable chair, chair uh, honorable speaker, what I would want to say today is we have seen, and I, I also want to categorically say this, we had our young men and women, the Gen Z, when they said we want to have a conversation. And this conversation is very healthy because uh, they woke us from the slumberland and they told us we need to look into this and that. And they were doing a very good job. Out of it, we had them and we continue hearing them. And I, I know as members of parliament who go back home and all of us are going to have a conversation with our Gen Z so that they can tell us of how they feel and how we should learn this nation. 
but I condemn those ones who are taking this conversation because it's a very healthy conversation that we are having right now. Those ones who are coming to hijack a conversation that was started by our young men and women, those selfish people should st stop. The Gen Z meant well for this nation. They were saying we, need, we needed to take a hostility measure in, uh, measures in this nation. They say that we should stop wastage, and they had a very, very good narrative. And the narrative was good for, uh, for all of us and for this Republic of Kenya. Those ones who are taking advantage of this situation, I want to tell them that we have only one country called Kenya, and it is our motherland. If they wanted to have their own mandamano, they should stop hijacking the, the, our conversation with our young men and women. What they are doing is wrong. Rooting other people's property is not is very bad because people have worked very hard to acquire what they have. I'll say as a nation, as we're continuing to have conversation with our young men and women, we'll tell them those ones who are hijacking their conversation, those ones have always been here and they have never offered solution. They are using a backdoor. They want to use um, young men and women, but them, they are only talking, hiding in their cocoons. They don't want to come outside. And yet our young men and women, they came out they talked and we heard them. And you can see even to even fuel uh, uh, to what is going on in the country. They even quote Mr. Speaker. They will have a caption of something a member of parliament said and that member of par parliament has not said that. I saw in, in my case that I was told that I had insulted the Gen Z's. I can never do something like that. I am a mother of Gen Z's in my house. And we do hear them. But those people who don't wish as well, they are going, creating stories outside there so that they can hijack a conversation that them themselves have failed to have. Mr. Speaker, I also say, and I'm talking to the ESCC, is an institution, an independent institution in this republic. They have also failed us because those people who are found to be corrupt, they are left to be investigated by the ESCC so that they can be taken to court. We usually hear of arrests, but we don't see prosecution. the deaths that we are experiencing right now. Even it is going to be used in our economy, even to build roads or even to do connectivity to the electricity. So these are conversations because our Gen Z's have come out and have told us we open the conversation that are very hard to be discussed during bold daylight. We need also to the Pandora Papers, when it exposed them, we had been told that we were given 21 days for it to be told whoever has money outside our country and has touched that money and it is doing, it is not, it is doing our country no good. We need to have those tough uh, conversations that even those mega, even COVID-19 billionaires, these are the kind of conversation our Gen Z are saying, can we have this conversation in this country? Let us not uh, sweep things under the carpet and we say we don't have money, and yet there are people we know who stole from Kenya, and they have uh, Kenyans, and they have never been prosecuted. So I am talking to our ESCC. Up your game. All those people who have been uh, caught uh, to have taken Kenyan money, please help us to take them to court, because you have been assigned that duty as an, institu as a, as an institution by Kenyans to be arresting those people who are rooting this nation. Honorable Speaker, there are 30 billion Kenya shillings that ha has been cut from going to the county governments. After we finish the conversation at the national level, then we are going to go to the county government level. Also, we check and we see how also they are spending their money because we have seen a lot of wastage, a lot of corruption, a lot of rooting, 
and nobody is talking about it. Money is money, either at the national government or even at the county government. It is Kenyan money, and we all need to know what is the purpose or what the money has, whatever intended fu uh, function it was supposed to do at the county level, they follow it to the rata. Because I can tell you from where we sit and from where I come from, I can tell you there are a lot of wastage and the programs to which they undertake are programs that cannot be audited at any level. So we need to look into this. Like I have said there earlier, this is our nation, our country, Kenya. We have had our young men and women and they were bold enough and they talked very loudly and we heard them. And the conversation must continue so that we can put our Kenya where it's supposed to be. We cannot sit back and let money to be rooted. And people are told this, uh, this department has been caught uh, embezzling money from the public. Then ESCC is uh, investigating. Years down the line, we don't know exactly what happened. So if ESCC can arrest here and there, then people would start fearing with misusing public funds. And that is the conversation our Gen Z's are talking about. If as the nation and the, as parliament we are discussing about the supplementary budget and the hostility measures that we have taken, undertaken moving forward, then it means that every person, every Kenyan, wherever we are, we need now to stand up and speak when we see something wrong happening. We should not be quiet anymore. If there is rooting anywhere, we need to speak out. And if we don't speak out, we are going to let our young men and women down because then they spoke and we heard them. Then what we need to do is to act and implement on what we have promised them. Implement. If we have said we are having hostility measures, this money, if it goes to the departments where they are supposed to be, either health, energy, roads, or even social protection, when that money goes there, can we spend this money to the intended purpose? Because if we don't do that, then we are going to be failing our nation and are failing our young men and women after they spoke and we heard them and the conversation is speaking. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for the opportunity you have accorded me. Asante. Honorable Dr. Joyce Osogo Bensuda, tell us what is happening in Omabe in addition to the budget. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. And I thank you because you are, you are very efficient. You kindly you lift up your mic. I, oh, sorry. I normally assume that I have the mic on my throat. Uh, I want to really appreciate that you are always effective on equity, on giving members chances. I was here in the morning, and it is evening. It is past seven. You came and found me here, and you've seen it important that ladies should contribute. I thank you and I appreciate you for that. Mr. Speaker, I rise to make my contribution on this supplementary budget one. I want to say, Mr. Speaker, that I'm making my contributions based on observations and providing for some gaps which I think need to be looked into when we are still under this budget cycle so as I am sure I am fully representing Homer Bay County and Kenya as a whole. Mr. 